Okay guys, so I'm going to try to film this with one of my legs on my tripod is broken. Um, I don't know, maybe I can make it a little bit shorter. I guess I should have tried this before I got a hold of you. Hang on just a second, I may edit this out, but I think this might, might actually work. Okay. So, I'm um, creating my own patterns. This is one of three parts that I'm going to do. Um, the first part is freehand. This is what I'm going to show you how I originally started. Um, I had quit smoking in 98, and this was a way for me to keep my hands busy. Um, I had issues with the hand to mouth, so I used Twizzlers. I uh, got very fortunate I didn't gain weight when I when I quit smoking, so it took me a couple tries, but I finally did it, and I have been smoke-free since 98. But, the good news is, I developed uh, a passion for, I've always, I've cross-stitched since I was, um, oh gosh, let's see, since I was 10 years old, um, so that makes it right at about 37 years. But anyway, uh, my husband at the time used to do some doodling, and one of the things he doodled was just this drawing that he did on paper and I thought oh that would be so awesome um, that would be a great cross stitch could you make me a couple more well he never did make me any more so I, I just took the one that he did make me and um, I'm going to insert a couple of pictures here to show you exactly what I did so the first thing I did was I took the image um, that he made and here's an example um, it was drawn out um, I took it and I held it up to, I taped it to a light. Alright guys, um, I think I finally got my camera set up. Oh, now I have my cat playing in the window. Uh, my camera set up the way I want it. I keep breaking legs on my tripod, so I think I figured out a way that I could be doing this. Um, Alright, so this is part one of three. Um, several people have asked about my patterns, so here goes. All right, first one I ever created. I'm pretty proud of this. Um, this was done by my first husband in '98. Um, it was a drawing that he did, and I thought it was really cool. Um, take it out of the sleeve because I don't want it to shine on you. I thought it was really cool because he um, he just did it freehand, and I thought oh, that would make such a cool cross stitch pattern because I was obsessed with cross stitching at the time. And I hope this comes in really good. Um, this is the pattern that I that I drew out from his drawing. Now, what I do is I take an image. Um, well, first I take some graph paper. This has got um, let's see, these are five squares in each block, and I'm finding this to be more of it's a little bit smaller than 14 count. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see, this is 10. Oh, maybe it's around, looks like it's right at about 13 count, which is an odd number, but anyway. Um, so this was the drawing that uh, I had originally, he had done, and then I transferred on here. And how I did it was I took my graph paper, um, and I taped it to a window, or a light source of some kind. Then I taped his picture over the top of it, and I freehand drew it. Now, I later went back and redid it and kind of did, you know, the rough edges because you, you, you want your corners to be smooth and um, on this one, I don't think, no, I didn't put any back stitching on it. I, I did do back stitching around the eyes, but I did not do back stitching around, oh yes I did too, I back stitched the image. It's been so long since I've made this. Um, and you can change the colors and play with it a little bit, but anyway, so what I did was, um, and then I took colored pencils and just filled it in, and I wrote in the color that I wanted it to be. I went to a DMC chart and matched up, I think I have one here actually, matched up the colors that I wanted them to be. Let's see, where is that? Um, oh, here's one. Oh, this is just the numbers. All right, this is just a number chart, sorry. Uh, but there are charts out there that you can that you can go to their website and you can print off. And it actually gives you the number that it actually is. This is what I take with me when I go shopping for a kit. When I'm wanting to get DMC floss. Uh, I, I color in the blocks that 
the pattern calls for and that way I don't have to carry my key with me and get it all dirty or whatever or I don't have to take the time to print off. I just have a whole bunch of these printed off and I just mark the ones that I I need to shop for when I'm at the store. But anyway, so <clears throat> this is how I got started um, creating my own patterns. Um, I started this way and this is what it looks like. Is that not awesome? I think that is so cool. This light just does not do it justice. I just think it's really, really cool. Um, I don't have this pattern up for sale. Um, what I would need to do is, at this point, is take the pattern and transfer it onto my, my computer program and turn it into a PDF file. But this one has a lot of sentimental value. Um, and I won't go into detail about that because I'll probably start crying. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of sentiment value on this one. Um, but yeah, you can see I usually sign my name and um, 1998. Yeah, that's when I created it. But anyway, this was the first pattern I ever created and cross-stitched. Um, and like I said, this is this is pretty near and dear to my heart. But I, I developed such a passion for it. I thought, oh, this is so awesome. I need to keep doing this. So that was the first one I ever created. The second one I ever created um, is this Garfield. Um, I, if those of you who know me know I absolutely adore Garfield. Um, I've spent many, many dollars over the years before I had my daughter um, on eBay collecting different Garfields and my friends would buy Garfields for me and um, I do occasionally do the Garfields. Um, I still have some books and coloring books and things like that. Keychains. In fact, my whole room, maybe one day I'll, when I get it all dusted up, uh, I'll go in and I'll videotape my room and show you that I have Garfield literally plastered all over my bedroom and, and I'm almost a 50 year old woman. But anyway... Um, and I, I did not come to really appreciate uh, this character until, well, I want to say it was about my late 20s. My sister, when we were younger and teenagers, my middle sister, she was the one that always um, had a thing for Garfield and had the little Garfield Odie and Pookie and Arlene and all that. But anyway, all right, so this is the second one that I did. Um, and how I did this one, let me take it out of the sleeve. How I did this one was, um, I was into uh, needle punch. And I didn't like regular needle punch. Oh, it looks like it's taped. Oh, that was where I taped it to the window. I didn't like regular needle punch. Um, so I got one of those mechanical needle punches. And a bunch of iron-on patterns. And that's what this one was. It was a free-handed iron-on pattern that someone had given me uh, for my collection. And I, I never did, I never did uh, put it on material and do the needle punch on it. I, I, I got, I wore my machine out. In fact, I, I ended up buying two of them at $60 a pop in, in the late 80s, early 90s. You know, that kind of adds up. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I just, I just absolutely adored this drawing. I thought it was so cute. So I thought, oh, I could cross stitch this. Oh, let's do this. Okay, so, to take this. I put it up on the window. I taped it on the window. That's why there's actually there's two-sided tape on it from where I, I taped it up on the window and used it like a shadow box. In fact, let's see if I can, you can see what I'm talking about, if I can hold it up. You can kind of see it a little bit, but anyway. Okay, so I taped it on the window, and then I taped a piece of, um, uh-oh, Ellie, are you okay, baby? She got a hold of something. Um, then I taped a piece of graph paper on top of that and colored it in. And this is what I got. This is my Garfield pattern. I just thought, oh, this is so cute. And with these, I just used the Christmas red and the Christmas green and the black and then the, you know, the typical orange. Now, because this is such a big project, you'll see, if you've seen like my squirrel and the whale tail and all that, um, they are bigger. They're, they're, they're for beginners. They are. They are for people who just want to just numb out and, or if it's their first time or if they're young. And, and that's what a lot of my patterns are. They're, they're for beginners. Um, I do have some more intricate ones, but I'm going to explain how I made those later. But anyway, this turned out really cute. I liked it. You can do the shading on it. Um, do them any colors you want. That's a good thing. I love you using, um, different, uh, artist pencils. Um, doing the graphing in with the pencils and coloring in and, and the shading and all that. But anyway, this was my the second Garfield picture that I ever made. Um, this is actually the pattern from that picture. 
So I thought it turned out pretty good. Um, and if you'll see here, like around the eyes and the teeth, you know, you got to kind of play with it a little bit right in here. Um, and there are going to be some half stitches. Um, if you want to have rounded corners, there are going to be some half stitches. Uh, I could not avoid that. I wish I could. I'm not a big fan, but I do like the results. And then going back through and putting in the all the back stitch um, with the half stitches looks really good. And it, like I said, you know, it forms its toes really well. But that was the second one I ever made. Um, and then I moved on from there and made a couple more, and I, I don't have them. I wish I did have them to show you. Like I said, I've been collecting for many, many years. So, to give you an example, I took a couple of pictures, and I freehanded for the holidays. I thought it would be appropriate. This pumpkin. Um, yes, his mouth looks funny, and I was kind of nervous doing this, because I haven't done this in, this this way in, in forever. So, I'm going to show some, I'm going to insert some pictures around here in this area. Uh, of the video and show you uh, freehanded with pencil. Now what you can do is you, if you've got some of your children's coloring books um, or even go to the dollar store and get some really cool coloring books um, or a magazine or you can freehand in pencil. Yes baby? Uh, uh. Hang on just I'll be right back guys. Sorry about that. Okay so anyway um, freehand with a pencil. You All different kinds of ideas of different places that you can get get little pictures. Let me see if I've got one. Oh, here's one. Here's one that I was going to do. This was a, another one of those um, that I told you that somebody gave me as to, they made me an iron on. Um, this is an older version of a Garfield. If you guys, any of you remember, if you're old enough to remember what Garfield originally looked like, he looked similar to this. I can't remember if my sister drew this or if somebody else did. But anyway, so like I said, you know, take it, take your graph paper, put it over the top of it and over a light source and you can draw it. Or you could freehand on the graph paper. That's another way you can do it. But anyway, in the sense of this, I wanted to do, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys this. Um, and I am going to, it's like I said, it's kind of cheesy. It's kind of small. It's, it's nothing intricate. Um, but I wanted to get this video out there for the holidays. So I am going to, um offer this free pattern um, if you are interested uh, for the pumpkin for the holidays if you know someone who's starting you want to pass on that craft you want to pass on the art um, you are welcome to it just email me at young, young 40 mom at gmail.com and uh, I will send it to you so I kind of changed it up a little bit because if you'll notice the eyes are a little off um, and I kind of centered the nose a little bit. You can kind of see where I centered the nose. And again, I, I held this up to a light source. Let's see if I can do it. And I drew it. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if I can. No, maybe not. Okay, but anyway. So I held it up to a light source. I drew it. Let me adjust the camera back. I drew it from that to this. Now, I did not color it in black because... Um, I did, in fact, I think I did the mouth purple and the eyes blue, just so that I could see it, the squares and where I need to go. There's a lot of half stitches right in here because I wanted jagged edges for the teeth. But, um, then over here, it's 78 stitches by 66 stitches, and so I counted on the 14 count, it's going to be 5 and, oh, it's not focusing real, real good. Five and three fourths by four and three fourths. So that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it on a 14 count on some scrap, um, scrap eight o'clock that I had. But anyway, um, this is my center point. That's why you see that little blob there. The center point. What I'm going to end up doing is putting this on a, um, on my computer program and and printing it out that way. But um, anyway, so this is my pumpkin. And this is how I originally started. Like I said, this is part one of three of different steps that I went through to get to where I'm at now on my computer program with the, with the creating the patterns. But, um, and then again, the stem here. So, this is going to be one of my whips. <laughs> Just to show you, and hope I'll, I'll get it done by Halloween. But anyway, so I started it, and I went ahead, and instead of using the 310, the black DMC floss, I am using 3371, which you guys know is is a go-to for it's it's a dark dark brown um it's more to me it's it's more forgiving than the black it's lighter it's it's just it's not as heavy 
as the DMC black. And I am stitching this with three three strands um, on 14, 8 o'clock. But anyway, so that's, that's where I'm at. Um, and usually when I have blocks of color like this, what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll do the outline first just to make sure that I've got it right. I don't want to have to undo too many stitches. So what I do is when I have blocks of one color like this, I'll go through and I'll stitch all the way around and do the outline first and then go in and fill it in um, because that way I know I've got it right. Because this right here, you know, if you go ahead and, and do the outline, um, or at least this is how I do it. I, I go ahead and I do the outline and that way, you know, if I mess up, then I don't have to worry about going back and forth and having to rip out a whole bunch of stuff. I can just rip out just this one line. So, and because the rest of it's going to be filled in with an orange or different shades of orange, I'm thinking what I'm going to do is where these lines curve, maybe do a darker, darker shade. And then I'm going to go and probably, I'm going to go and outline all of it with the 3371. I'm going to do an outline on it, but where the darker shades are, where the lines are, I'm going to do like a, a cross stitch row of a, a darker, um, darker orange. And, and that's the advantage of, of go ahead and having some extra flosses on hand. I, I actually collected floss for many, many years. Um, so I have like four or five of those. I think I have five of the, um, the little floss bins. But it's like one of every color. Um, I started doing that a long time ago. I don't know. I don't know why I got obsessed. So whenever I could. But anyway, so that's part one. That's the process of what I go through to create my patterns. Um, and this is going to be my whip. So you guys saw my squirrel. Squirrel was done in a similar way, but I do it on a computer program now. It's a lot easier for me now. Um, and then I can tweak it the way I want to, and don't have to worry about eraser marks or all that but this was my first step like I said again you know there's my Garfield reverting back and my very beginning so this was awesome I hope you guys learned something if you didn't if you have any questions or comments please leave them below um, I am going to um, I have a new um, just for fun page on Facebook. Um, it's I'll leave the link below so that you can click on it if you like. If you haven't subscribed, please do. If you like this video and you want to see more, please give it a thumbs up. Do it this way, thumbs up. And uh, <laughs> subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want to see more, just stay tuned for part two. Peace out. Is she licking it? Was she just licking it? She's licking. Is she licking it? And there she is. She's not doing anything she was doing a minute ago. She is. She's eating it. She's eating the catnip. That's weird. Oh, there she goes. She's going to love on it. Is it good? Is it good? Is it? Huh? 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 Is it good?
Is she licking it again? I put it on both sides. She probably hasn't discovered the other side yet. Yeah. I <laughs> I'm slipping it.